Hey, welcome to Culinary Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman. We're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Lance, I didn't expect to see you today. You're uh, uh, coming in off and uh, right before your webinar. Katie, as always, good to see you. Maybe one of these days we need to make a, a special guest appearance by your significant other. Because I always just, I, I don't know what he looks like. I only see the back of his head. Lance, when I call her up, she's, he sits behind her and I just see the back of his head. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, there we go. We need to Bob see. Uh, all of them. I'm sorry. We need to see all of these. There you go. There you go. Bob Judge, CEO, founder, government co-founder, Government Loan Solutions. Bob is a recognized. Hmm. Bob, maybe, maybe we should change it to the recognized. I don't know, but good to have you, Bob. I guess I should have my audio on to be recognized, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Semi-recognized. A video in this case. <laughs> Um, hey, Bob, give a plug for uh, what we're doing next week. Yeah, next week uh, should be interesting. Again, we're doing our, uh, you know, uh, sort of a, a skin down secondary market um, event. Um, it's an interesting time in the market with a couple of, obviously, uh, COVID, uh, PPP, uh, pooling issues, secondary market at, uh, at pretty good level. So it should be an interesting event to talk about what's uh, going to happen you know, next year, um, a lot of uncertainty out there. See if we can help to to figure out what's going to happen. I notice you conveni conveniently left off a new uh, administration with an asterisk next to it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> again, we'll see how much uh, you know that'll change things. But you know, no, no, I, well, I'm I'm sorry, we're talking about. I apologize. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's, I think it's going to be uh, a, a good thing for those who are, um, you know, going to be selling next year. And uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, a lot of uncertainty in the world. And, uh, you know, we'll see if we can help try to bring some light to what, uh, what could happen next year. Let's go to the polls, and then I, we've got some specific things for you to talk about, Bob. But uh, I came up this morning. Our CARES Act of Payments. Well, first, what, Lance, what is an 11-12 payment? Well, in the CARES Act, SBA provided six monthly payments for existing SBA of borrowers who were in normal servicing status, and it was a great relief to all of the SBA borrowers. But, Bob, as we found out earlier today, CARES Act payments will be taxable uh, to the small business, and we were having a lot of discussion before we came on yeah, the small business did get the benefit of the CARES Act payments, but I don't think they expected that it would be a taxable event. So uh, there's going to be a little money owed by most of small businesses. Now, this could, could get overturned with legislation. Who knows? But they're taxable I, right now. Yeah, I my guess is Congress made it clear, and it's been bipartisan, Katie, my guess is this will not stand. What do you, what's your feeling, Katie? Uh, we haven't really heard about them taking it out yet, but definitely reading the original CARES Act, it really didn't sound like they wanted this to be taxed like that. So I imagine that was uh, maybe an error or uh, overlooked. So it's probably something that will be addressed in the coming weeks. Well, the IRS. The IRS woke up, Bob, and said, hey, look at all this money we can tax. Well, but, uh, and also, if the IRS is going to do it, it means the states are going to do it as well. So Exactly. Yeah, that's going to happen. Bob, does this have an impact on the secondary market? Uh, not really. Um, you know, PPP is not part of the secondary market, per se. So, uh, you know, we only concern ourselves with the normal um, 7A loans. So this really doesn't – PPP stuff doesn't really have much impact on, on 7A. Okay, a second poll question now. This is as of December 9th, 2020. So this is as of today. But which of the following circumstances is lender not required to issue a 1099? Loans that have not been purchased by SBA, 504 loans, loans that have been purchased by SBA but are serviced by the lender, by and uh, PPP forgiveness. Only one of them. Go ahead, Lance. Bob, you, you did a nice job of dancing all around it, and uh, 
you do not have to issue a 1099 for the CARES Act payments on loans that have not been purchased by SBA. SBA is going to issue the 1099 on 504 loans. They will issue the 1099 on loans that SBA has purchased back from the secondary market and are servicing and will issue the 1099s on PPP forgiveness. Lance, I think you're wrong on that, Katie. What what does the uh, notice say? Uh, it, as far as I could tell, Lance was right. SBA 504 oh, loans are going to be issued by okay. <laughs> SBA. Uh, and the loans that are purchased by SBA and serviced by lenders are going to be on the lender. Uh, PPP, we still don't know a whole lot about how that's going to be handled, uh, so I don't really know on that case. All right, so Lance, when, when is the lender required to file the 1099? Maybe I should have been clearer on that. Uh, 1099s typically will be filed in January. No, but when, under what circumstances must the lender prepare the 1099? Oh, oh if, you, if you've got an existing SBA 7A loan that has uh, that you are servicing uh, it, one that has not been bought back by the, from the secondary market by SBA, uh, you will be issuing a 1099 for the CARES Act payments that have been made. Okay, and uh, yeah, and that's that's what we want to do, and that's those are due by January 31st. But don't panic. I think we're going to see more legislation on that. But as of today, that's where we are. Um, yeah, finally, uh, Bob, I'm sorry, Bob, when they in, issued that information notice, you saw, you heard a UGG from small business borrowers who got the payments, and you heard one from participant banks who all of a sudden have to issue a 1099. Lance, real quick, tell the story, if you weren't borrower, they have, what, $25,000 a month payments that are being, that are being uh, paid for, what's going to well, happen to them? This actually was not a customer of mine. This sometimes, as you guys would expect, I get phone calls from SBA borrowers and SBA participant banks. I got a phone call from a guy in another state who has an SBA loan with another bank who read that and called me this morning. He had $25,000 a month payments that were made by SBA, so $150,000 worth of monthly payments were made for him. He's like, my tax rate. 27%. So he, he's going to have a additional, because that will be showed as additional income to the small business, he's going to have a chunk of money that is owed on federal taxes if this is not overturned by legislation. Right. And well, as well as state. Hey, Bob. And, 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 I, I'm sorry, Bob. It, and, and it's like I told you, so you got the free money, but I think the catch-22 here, it's like the idle grants that are re taken out of forgiveness. Uh, the borrowers didn't know this was going to happen when when it was given to them. Yeah, most of the lenders did not as well. I know there's a few lenders who thought about that, but you're right. It's the uncertainty that's not fair, um, and hopefully on the next round of stimulus, which will happen, will make all that clear. Uh, this is for Bob Judge. Will the government shutdown affect the SBA secondary market? Will a government shutdown? And the reason why we ask that is to, we're running out of money as of Friday. So, Bob, take us through the scenarios. Sure. Uh, basically, when we talk about running out of money, the uh, SBA has run out of the ability to form pools. So loans can still be sold um, in a secondary market, but pooling has been shut down until they um, add more money into the uh, their allotment, um, you know, for for pooling. So, bottom line is that pool assemblers they buy loans to pool them. If they can't pool them, then they sit on their on their respective balance sheets, which will have the, have the will will lower the secondary market over time. Right now, the market is kind of holding in there because people expect this to be dealt with. Um, you know, pretty soon, but if it drags on, it's going to have a negative impact in the secondary market. So hopefully this will, uh, you know, this, this will get clarified on a relatively uh, quick timeline, and then the secondary market can get back to, you know, where it is right now or wherever it happens to be heading in general. So it is a, a concern for the time being. If it, if it, if it 
hangs around for a while, it's going to become more of a concern and more uncertainty, which is never a good thing for any market. Uh, um, I'm a CFO. I'm sitting on a couple of loans that I want to sell before the end of the year. Do I sell it this week? Do I sell it next week? Do I wait till the last week? Uh, what's your advice? Well, in December, it's always a good idea to sell sooner rather than later. Um, so I, I would say that that still holds because you know, right now the market is still in pretty good shape. So if I, if I had loans to sell, I would sell them ASAP um, and uh, not wait, uh, you know, later in the month because you know, I don't – right now the market's still pretty much holding where it was. I don't see it having much upside even if they do uh, add more pooling um, because December is pretty much going to be shot anyway. But um, I think uh, if you're going to sell, so sell sooner rather than later. And just as the secondary market brokers are unable to pull, uh, you can still sell the loans, correct? Yeah, they, you can still sell a loan. Um, the pool assembly can still buy it. Pool assembly can sell the loan to any other investor. But pooling is by far the most efficient way for a pool assembler to get rid of loans. So taking that away from them is a you know significant uh, hindrance to their ability to move paper. Bob, two on this chart. What caused dip? What caused the V? What caused it to go down, and what caused it to go back up? Um, well, the the first decline was the uh, COVID. Uh, obviously, you know, shutting everything down. You know, the immediate impact was people were concerned about uh, enormous amount of defaults in small business. Um, once the the Fed, everybody got involved in a pretty quick, um, you know, some of the relief acts that they they came up with happened pretty quickly, so the market started climbing with the anticipation that the falls won't be quite so bad. Uh, also, the Fed uh, started the TELF program again, so TELF 2.0, as it's commonly referred to, which basically has the Fed financing SBA pools, um, which became, you know, was a popular program for a number of pool assemblers that pushed the market up to the 120 level. And now um, it's backed off from the 120 level because that program is ending at the end of this month. Um, also, the end of the six-month payments by the SBA, uh, which kept prepayments down, those are starting to come back to, to normalize. So um, people anticipating market returning closer to where it was prior to that first drop. So things are kind of normalizing after... Um, uh, the negative event of the COVID, the positive event of support, and now we're getting back to normal. And, of course, I have to ask the question, Bob, what's this chart going to look like in 2021? Well, I think that, you know, you know well, one, I'm not sure what you want to say right now, considering next week is our event. So, <laughs> I think it's gonna <laughs> Don't come away too much. <laughs> yeah, I think that, uh, you know, probably going to get back to what the line looks like in the earlier part of the year somewhere in that 115 to 117 and a half for a fully priced 25 year. Um, again, it, it, COVID gets bad again, the shutdowns, high defaults, all these kind of things can happen. Uh, would have some impact on the market, but I think uh, you know, the trading range has been that 115, 117 and a half. I don't anticipate it being somewhere in that, in that range. Yeah, thank you. Katie, real quick, we have attached the notice that came up this morning in the chat box. Uh, just go over it real quick. Uh, we've talked about what is responsible to the lenders. Anything else on this checklist that they should be aware of? Uh, yes. Yeah, so as we already talked about the uh, responsibility of the lenders, I just summarized that real quickly. Uh, for In general, 7A is going to be uh, so, uh, the 7A uh, is going to be handled by the lender. They're going to have to issue those uh, 1099s unless SBA is, um, has purchased and is servicing uh, those loans. If SBA has purchased it, but the lender is still servicing it, the lender is still responsible for those 1099s. Uh, for microloan, uh, intermediary is responsible for uh, the 1099 for microloans um, serviced by those intermediaries. Again, the SBA is responsible uh, for issuing it if uh, the SBA is um, servicing that loan. Uh, the unusual one on this list that we've already kind of mentioned is SBA is responsible for issuing all 1099s for 504 loans. 
uh, and the total amount of uh, Section 1112 payments must be reported as income. Uh, that's going to be um, more on the, the borrower's side, but it's something to be aware of. Uh, 7A lenders and micro loan uh, intermediaries uh, are going to be identified as the payer uh, in the payer box on the 1099. And, uh, Mortgage in the mortgage interest statement amount of interest paid on the loan uh, in uh, eleven twelve payments must also be reported to the IRS. Well, I'm sure your CPA firms are going to be very happy when you bring this to them. <laughs> <laughs> Gail asked the question: What boxes are we checking on the ten ninety nine? Gail, I'm going to punt. Have just have your yeah. servicing. Have your um, whoever's preparing those just do that and. Probably those um, CPAs and smarter people than me. In that. Hey, I enjoyed doing this. Uh, congratulations, Dorothy Thomas. She's out of California, Central Valley Community Bank. Where's Central Valley? Uh, what uh, town is she in? Uh, uh, it's, it's, I know she does loans for that whole Central Valley area, so I'm not sure exactly on her location, but uh, that is a fairly wide area, a lot of uh, farming in that area and things like that as well. So she does handle some of those loans as well. Katie, you read all of the submissions. What was the one thing that stuck out for you about Dorothy? Uh, she's very uh, charismatic. She's a great leader. Uh, she had a great uh, testimony from whoever submitted her application saying that she helps with the production of over $600 million in SBA projects um, over the 30 years that she's worked for the company. Uh, and it's estimated that she's uh, saved about 8,000 jobs. So it's very significant. She's very uh, charismatic in general and great uh, records there on all fronts. She's really great. Well, again, yeah, congratulations. I'm, we'd love to hear stories of people who have uh... – um, gone into the community and have embraced the community and obviously the community has embraced her and she is a significant force in the main street in her community. This is sort of a conflict of interest. Uh, by the way, her name is Rose to her friends. Rose worked for me, Lance, uh, a, while. a while back, a while back. We'll leave it at that. She's uh, when, when I was uh, in California, she relocated to Texas. She's a great uh, lender. Again, um, what are some of the highlights on her app, on her uh, nomination, Katie? So everyone was talking about how great she is at leading her team. Again, uh, they're saying that she she assists her team in making two hundred fifty million dollars in SBA products annually. Uh, so it's just really a lot of of great statements from her team saying that she's a great leader. And she's created some unique ways of leading, and that's really why we selected her. Right. Very good. And, that, and she's obviously the Small Business Women Lender of the Year. So congratulations. We're announcing, uh, we have a number, number that we'll be announcing. Uh, I think we have the PPP Lenders of the Year, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, Bob, uh, let's get Bob Judge back in here. Take a look at this agenda, Bob. What, uh, anything there that's exciting to you? Well, it's all exciting. <laughs> There you I mean, go. I love it. I love the stuff that I'm directly involved with is more exciting to me. Um, you know, secondary market update. Um, you know, I'm curious about uh, you know Chris Chris's section there as well, talking about market analysis. Um, USDA is also a you know a, a topic that I enjoy. You can listen to Jordan always. He's a you know yeah. great speaker and a, a very knowledgeable person about what's going on there. And uh, yeah, and I'm curious about Lance's last section. That's oh, I'm, I'm very interested about Lance because that's true, Lance. I mean, Lance, that's his uh, wheelhouse in terms of servicing liquidation, and it's going to impact the secondary market, Lance. Well, I think that uh, the PPP defaults have the potential of impacting the secondary market as well as participant lenders, and we're still real curious, Bob, like I said, PPP servicing – in my view, falls under the 50-57-2 right now unless SBA comes out with other guys. Very good. Real quick, Lance, uh, in 40 minutes, you're going to start our webinar. And uh, uh, give, give us a quick uh, quick uh, elevator pitch for it. Guys, we're going to talk about PPP forgiveness, all the elements, the changes, 
uh, the various forms that are being used and things you can do as a participant lender to help in the forgiveness process. So if, if you're interested in PPP forgiveness, this is a great webinar for you to participate in. Just, just drop an email to joseph at comreport.com. He'll take care of all the send you the links. For those of you who do sign up for it, we will be sending out our Coleman's uh, PPP forgiveness guide. Go to the next slide. We have a nice cover sheet on it. Or, there we are. <laughs> hey, Bob, I, I, I forgot to add that it's worth the price of admission just to get the PPP forgiveness. Guide. Well, it is. We, yeah, it, it is, actually. Uh, you're absolutely right. And uh, so that's uh, – we're, we're very committed to, to letting – um, the lenders know what's happening as well as the bars. We have quite a few bars signed up for the webinar as well, Lance, so that'll be interesting. Okay. Uh, well, very okay. good. Hey, Bob Judge, thank you so much for your time. Look forward to talking to you next week. Sorry we're not meeting in Washington. That's always a fun time. But uh, Bob, I'm we'll, sorry, uh, too, because both of the Bobs, I'm sorry, too, because I wanted to go to Washington. And Katie, I think, wanted to go to Washington. She is in Washington. Oh, wait a minute. Washington, D.C. <laughs> Wrong Washington. Wrong Washington. Uh, thank you all for your time. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, things are going to rock and roll. Uh, once once the dike breaks, the, these regulations are going to be very, very uh, almost back to a daily basis. So we'll be on top of it. Uh, thank you for joining us today for Come Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Have a great afternoon.